So question 6.4, as soon as we see KC and then we see a mark allocation of seven, we should know that this is going to be a KC question. And so what I do immediately is I go set up my KC table. And so your teacher might label the table a little differently to me. I've seen many different ways, but we can typically put the reaction over here. Then we put the initial moles. Uh, the change. Your teacher might call that part the difference. Uh, then this would be moles at equilibrium. And then this would be concentration at equilibrium. All right. And then I would make a column for every element or every compound that we have. And then I would go fill it in. So it's two SO2 um, plus oxygen, which gives us SO3, two SO3. Okay. Then um, we can go see what the initial moles were. So they tell us here that initially we started off with 50 moles of uh, 50 moles of SO2. So we can put that over here, 50. We don't know how much oxygen. It says calculate the original mass of oxygen that was used. So I'm just going to put an X there. We have no idea how much mass or how many moles. And then for the product, we normally start with a zero over there. Then they tell us at equilibrium, we have 22 moles of SO3. So I can fill that in over here, 22. Now, guys, pay careful attention. What we can now do is we can see how do we go from here to here? Well, that would be plus 22. Now, that part that I've done in green is the most important part of this whole table because what I now do is I can fill in this value over here and I can also fill in this value over here just by looking at the mole ratio numbers that are in the front of each of those compounds. All right. So what I can see now is that the mole ratio over the oxygen to the SO3 is in a one to two ratio. Okay. So that means that if this one is 22, then this one must be 11. But it will be a minus 11. Why? Because it is a reactant. And what happens to the amount of reactants in a reaction? They become less. But if we look on the other side at the products, we know that they always become more. Okay. And so that's where the minus and the plus comes from over there. And then I can look at this one now. And the mole ratio of those two is two to two, which is the same as one to one. So I can put a minus 22 over here. Okay, then I can just do basic um, like maths. 50 minus 22 is 28. X minus 11 is just X minus 11. Then to find the concentration, I use the formula C equals to N over V. And they will give us the volume of the container. And here they give it to us as 200 decimeters. So I will then use that formula over here, over here, and over here. Right. Now I'm going to go work out the volume, I mean the concentration, by saying 28 divided by 200. Uh, we could probably simplify that on our calculators. 7 over 50. 7, wait, oh, that's 0 0.14. 0 0.14. Then this one would be x minus 11 over 200. And then this one would be 22 over 200. And if you type that on your calculator, 0 0.11. Okay, so there we have it, guys. We have everything in our KC table filled in. Now we can use the KC formula. Now remember that KC is products over reactants. 
Another thing to remember that in the KC calculation, we only use aqueous and gas. Okay. We do not use liquid or solid. We don't use those in the KC calculation. So if we have a quick little scan up here at the top, we can see we've got gas, gas, and gas. So we're good to go. We can use all of them in our KC calculation. Don't say I didn't warn you about that one. Um, that can catch you out. All right, so now we're going to go fill in the products. So the products would be the SO3. So I say that it's the concentration of the SO3. And then what I do is I look at the chemical reaction and I see if there's any number in the front. Yes, there is. And so that becomes a exponent over there. Then I go to my reactants, which is the oxygen. And then I multiply the SO2. And that's going to be to the power of two because there's a little two over there. All right. And so what I can now do is I go for everything in. And so that's going to be equal to 0 0.11 squared over the oxygen, which is x minus 11 over 200, multiplied by 0 0.14 squared. Now, we know what the KC answer is. They said that the KC answer is 7.328. 7.328. And now all of a sudden, this becomes like some PhD mathematical question where we've got to do some crazy stuff. No, I'm just joking, guys. It doesn't get too bad. It just looks horrible. But um, let's see what we can do here. So I'm just going to move all of this to the side. Right. So where to start with this, hey? Um, so what I think we could do here, there's so many different ways that you could solve this. So if you don't like the way I'm going to solve it, there's many different ways. I think hmm, if I was doing this by myself right now, what I would do, and this might confuse some of you, but as I said, solve this however you want. Okay. I think the way that most of us would agree with is I can take all of this if I wanted to, and I could multiply that onto the other side here. So I'm just going to leave it as 0 0.11 squared equals to 7.328 multiplied by 0 0.14 squared multiplied by x minus 11 over 200. Okay, that's all I've done so far. Then what I'm going to do is I want to get x alone. That is my end goal. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this part here by itself. And I'm going to take everything else to the other side. So it's going to be 0 0.11 squared multiplied by 200. You see, I took that 200 and I multiplied it over. And then I'm going to divide by 7.328 times 0 0.14 squared. And that's equal to x minus 11. Then in my next step, I'm going to take this minus 11 over to the other side. So I'm just going to do a quick little switcheroo here. So I hope you understand what I'm doing. I'm just trying to save space. So I took the 11 and I put it on the other side. So it became a positive. And now I'm just going to go type all of this on my calculator. You see how I manipulated the system by not putting anything on my calculator until I really have to, because otherwise I have to worry about the decimals and all of that nonsense. So I'm just going to Type all of this on my calculator now. Now, my answer is x equals to 27. Now, this is not the final answer. Some students, when they get the x, they think, ah, done. But, um, and then it's got a few other decimals. Remember that x is up here in my table, and that is the moles of oxygen. But that is not the question. The question said, use the above information to calculate the initial mass. Okay, so we need to calculate the original mass. I'm just switching my video off there so we can do a calculation over here. So we can use the mole formula now. And uh, the number of moles is 27,8489885 equals to the mass, which we don't know, 
over the molar mass of oxygen. Now, remember that oxygen, um, there's two of them there. So that's going to be 16 plus 16 because I'm getting that on the periodic table. And so I'm going to put a 32 over there. Then I can do a cross multiplication. And we get a final answer of 891, 0.17 grams.